update and uh, some news to share. There you are. I keep looking. Mommy, mama, mom. Words I have been long to be called my whole life. I wanted nothing more than to be fruitful and multiply. I spent most of my late teens and the beginning of my 20s in and out of the hospital in dire pain from a rare form of endometriosis. Trying every avenue my doctor could think of from consistent birth control to skip that time of the month to shoving me through early menopause at 20 years old to try and reboot my reproductive system. Nothing would work. So I was left with two choices, either try and get pregnant or have a partial hysterectomy. To make matters even worse, during my last laparoscopy look around my reproductive system, not only was my uterus not working properly, but we found out that my tubes were knotted. Being 21 years old and not in a good relationship, I decided that the pain was too severe to handle any longer, and I had my partial hysterectomy. Never again will I be fruitful. Skip ahead 10 years, I have a wonderful husband, a beautiful stepdaughter, and here's that want again. Mommy, mama, mom. I dreamed of glowing with a child in my belly. Everything about being in temple, whether it be Shabbat or high holidays, made me long for my own mishpa, my family. Sitting in our fertility office, our doctor gives us a 0.1 chance of me being able to carry our child. That night, I found myself crying alone in our bathroom so that no one could see how upset I was. Sitting there crushed, I felt like the biblical heroine, Hannah, who prayed so hard that God answered her prayers. God, please help me. Give me a child. I will do anything. Six long months of countless medications, shots, expensive medical bills, we were blessed with three perfect embryos. During one of my ultrasounds before our egg retrieval, our doctor noticed what I thought was a miracle. The lining of my uterus had grown back, and he tells me that I now have a 50% chance of carrying my child. Sobbing with joy, I call my husband to tell him the good news. Thanking God for answering my prayers, even with 50%. The day of our transfer mapping comes, and once again, I lie in the chair, and I pray. Please, God, let this work. The doctor comes in and tells me the bad news. There's too much scar tissue around my cervix to perform the transfer. I was crushed, my heart broken all over again. Standing there trying my hardest to not completely break down, as I am right now, I ask our doctor what's next. He says a gestational carrier or a surrogate are our only options. I had never felt so desperate and alone in my life. More bad news. Every surrogate that our doctor's office worked with was either unavailable for, their, for the foreseeable future or way out of our price range. Thankfully, the receptionist told me, ask every woman you know that has already had a child if they will carry for you. So I did. I text, I emailed, I Facebooked, I did everything possible to get a hold of every woman that I had ever known that had had a child. I offered as much money as we could afford, trying to draw in someone that could help us. I got a lot of replies. Most of them were not what I wanted. I'm so sorry you're going through this, but I could never give up a child that I carry. Finally, a close friend said yes, and that she would do it for free. Crying, I thanked her countless times and started setting up meetings with our doctor. On the day of her appointment, I woke up to a text. I'm sorry, but I can't help you. Not knowing if my heart could handle so much pain and disappointment, it's back to the drawing board. I was desperate. I spent the next year asking women who I hardly even knew and still no one would help us. Day in and day out, I put on a brave face, even though I was breaking inside. 
One day at my stepdaughter's dance studio, one of the other dance moms overheard my phone conversation about our situation. A few days later, I got a message. Hey, I have three kids. I definitely do not want any more, but I had great pregnancies. I will carry for you for X amount of dollars. Without even consulting my loving and understanding husband, I told her yes, and we were but we were definitely way over our budget. No turning back now. Jump ahead five months, tens of thousands of dollars, a very uncomfortable FDA testing, lots of lawyers' fees, and a transfer of our two best embryos. I pray, please, please, God, let them stick. I will do anything. Three days before our surrogate scheduled blood test, I get a call from our doctor's office. Your surrogate had an allergic reaction to the medication she's on. So she had to come in. We ran her blood and while she was here, we found out she is definitely pregnant. I didn't think that I could ever be happier. Until the day of our first ultrasound. There are two heartbeats. That night, I again sobbed with joy in the arms of my husband, thanking God for our twin babies. Being so consumed by our situation and feeling so alone going through this process, I was unaware that the emotional and financial help was available. Sitting here at Rosh Hashanah with my twin babies, I heard Lauren Hendelez speak about her infertility and the start of the Mishpah project. I couldn't believe that things like this project were around. I needed to be a part of it. I had to be a part of it. I asked everyone I knew to donate to this amazing grant that could have helped people like me. Jump ahead a year. The Mishpaha Project gives out its first grant to a woman and her husband who had already started their infertility journey, but were struggling financially to continue. I am beaming, absolutely beaming with joy to announce that she just welcomed right before Rosh Hashanah a baby boy. I am sharing my story with all of you to help those who struggle silently and give them a path forward line with support, not only emotionally, but financially. My husband and I had the most invasive and expensive infertility journey. Our transfer alone was over $8,000, and that wasn't even the most expensive part. One in eight women experience infertility, and many of them pray as hard as I did and as hard as Hannah did. You can be a part of answering our prayers by considering to donate to the Mishpah Project. The Mishpah Project would not exist without the, all the amazing people that have already donated, but we will always need more donors. So please, donate anything to help struggling people fulfill their dreams of being parents. Thank you all. <laughs>